things fall apart. Whole peoples have adamantly refused to judge reality, to criticize being, to blame God. It's interesting to consider the Old Testament Hebrews in this regard. Their travails followed a consistent pattern. The stories of Adam and Eve and Cain and Abel and Noah and the Tower of Babel are truly ancient. Their origins vanish into the mysteries of time. It's not until after the flood story in Genesis that something like history, as we understand it, truly starts. It starts with Abraham. Abraham's descendants become the Hebrew people of the Old Testament, also known as the Hebrew Bible. They enter a covenant with Yahweh, with God, and begin their recognizably historical adventures. Under the leadership of a great man, the Hebrews organize themselves into a society and then an empire. As their fortunes rise, success breeds pride and arrogance. Corruption raises its ugly head. The increasingly hubristic state becomes obsessed with power, begins to forget its duty to the widows and orphans, and deviates from its age-old agreement with God. A prophet arises. He brazenly and publicly reviles the authoritarian king and faithless country for their failures before God, in act of blind courage, telling them of the terrible judgment to come. When his wise words are not completely ignored, they are heeded too late. God smites his wayward people, dooming them to abject defeat in battle and generations of subjugation. The Hebrews repent at length, blaming their misfortune on their own failure to adhere to God's word. They insist to themselves that they could have done better. They rebuild their state, and the cycle begins again. This is life. We build structures to live in. We build families and states and countries. We abstract the principles upon which those structures are founded and formulate systems of belief. At first, we inhabit those structures and beliefs like Adam and Eve in paradise. But success makes us complacent. We forget to pay attention. We take what we have for granted. We turn a blind eye. We fail to notice that things are changing or that corruption is taking root and everything falls apart. Is that the fault of reality? Of God? Or do things fall apart because we have not paid sufficient attention? When the hurricane hit New Orleans and the town sank under the waves, was that a natural disaster? The Dutch prepared their dikes for the worst storm in 10,000 years. Had New Orleans followed that example, no tragedy would have occurred. It's not that no one knew. The Flood Control Act of 1965 mandated improvements in the levee system that held back Lake Pontchartrain. <laughs> Pontchartrain. Pontchartrain. Okay. The system was to be completed by 1978. Forty years later, only 60% of the work had been done. Willful blindness and corruption took the city down. A hurricane is an act of God, but failure to prepare when the necessity for preparation is well known that's a sin. That's failure to hit the mark. And the wages of sin is death. Romans chapter 6 verse 23. The ancient Jews always blamed themselves when things fell apart. They acted as if God's goodness, the goodness of reality, was axiomatic and took responsibility for their own failure. That's insanely responsible. But the alternative is to judge reality as insufficient, to criticize being itself and to sink into resentment and the desire for revenge. If you are suffering, well, that's the norm. People are limited and life is tragic. If your suffering is unbearable, however, and you are starting to become corrupted, here's something to think about. <laughs>